Hi, everybody. It is March 10, 2019. I was trying to do some research on Venezuela, and I don't know what happened to me, but I kind of lost it. I sunk really fast, exhaustion, unable to concentrate. Let's see what's happening. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Well, this explains what happened. I live here in South Carolina. You tired of this? You tired of living in an unconventional war when everybody who surrounds you it just ignores the war, but you know what's going on and you're being affected by it? Well, How are you doing, Floridians, and those of you in the southeast with these Doppler radar stations blasting away at us? I am getting very, very um, affected by everything that's going on in this country. I really, look, I never thought that Americans were exceptional. I never bought the uh, USA, 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 we're great, everybody else isn't mantra. I don't like what's happening in Venezuela now. I haven't liked our foreign policy, <laughs> to say the least. So, when I was doing the research for Venezuela to try to find out what, what is going on, every, every search, regardless of the words that I put in the search bar for YouTube, all I got was the authoritative news videos, mainstream media, pushing the official narrative, Maduro, a murderous dictator, God, how many times have we heard our country call those who do not bow down and immediately obey our dictators here. Then we just start calling them murderous dictators, mainstream media reporters. I can't even watch them anymore. They disgust me. They disgust me. There's a woman on Fox News, Trish. Reagan or Regan? Wow, man, is that woman some really sick, twisted, very capable of performing. She's not a reporter. She's a performer on Fox News. Performing for a paycheck. Well, yeah, I came up with a lot of it. A lot of uh, good articles on global research, um, but I'm going to play a few minutes of this interview with Greg Plants, uh, who is an actual investigative reporter, journalist, and he has a lot of very interesting things to say about what's happening in Venezuela. I don't think a lot of you know about the Koch brothers and their connection. Oh, and Goldman Sachs and Steve Mnuchin. Let's listen just for a few minutes. So uh, recap for us exactly where we're at with regard to Venezuela. Well, we're, uh, where we're at is there's a guy named Juan Guaido who announced himself as president, 35-year-old white guy. This is a nation made up of mostly mestizo dark people. Uh, he's announced himself as president, never ran for president, and, uh, and Donald, it was after a call from Donald Trump saying, you call yourself the president, and I'll call you the president. And that's uh, how now uh, uh, Trump and his uh, oily allies have, are literally telling Venezuela who their president is. The guy never claimed, he didn't even run. The only person who's ever said he's run for office is some woman named Kirsten Gillibrand. I don't know who she is, but she said that we have to recognize Juan Guaido, uh, as president because he was legitimately elected. Senator 
Gillibrand. When was that election? It never was held. Yeah. So we have the U.S. imposing a president. Why? Uh, well, underneath Venezuela is the largest reserve of oil on the planet. Go to the OPEC site, you'll see it, it has reserves that are about four times that of Saudi Arabia. Whoa. And what, you know, what's going on here? So what, there's many things I want to, that I could address. We've talked before. Well, let's start out about fact, that oil. Yeah. What, this is a special oil, and unique oil, kind oil. of oil, right? Yes. Well, first of all, it's, it's a very heavy oil, super heavy oil, and it's, and it's uh, the number one customer for Venezuela are the uh, refineries on the Gulf Coast of Texas known by, uh, known, owned by, guess who, Coke Industries. So Venezuela's number one customer are the Brothers Coke. And normally you get a discount for gunky, horrible, heavy oil uh, that has to be sold cheap. The Canadians knock off 30% off the price of the oil because it's so gunky from their heavy tar sands. Well, the Cokes are captive customers. Hugo Chavez, who I knew, and I know the current president, too, um, said, look, we know their captive customers are going to stick it to them. They charge a massive premium to the Cokes for their oil. The Cokes don't like that. So they have two choices, either complete the XL pipeline, which brings down the Canadian junk to the Gulf. Now, hang on just a second. Let me just back up a little bit. My understanding yeah. is that the reason why all this is happening, everything you're describing, is because it takes a completely different kind of refinery to, to turn this gunky, thick, heavy oil into gasoline and diesel fuel and other things from a normal refinery. And the only yeah. one of those kind of special kind of refineries for that special kind of oil, which can then only process that special kind of oil, is the one that's owned by Coke Industries on the coast, right? That's correct. In other words, Coke Industries has refineries in the middle of Texas oil fields. They can't use Texas oil because it's not dirty enough, heavy enough, filthy enough, believe it or not, for the Coke Industries refinery right. so they're stuck with venezuela and they don't like being stuck with the price that's demanded of venezuela so they need some regime change going on here so the u.s government has embargoed lat as embargoed venezuela that is trump has embargoed venezuela which is um, devastating they, their economy devastating they can't get food they can't get medicine it's absolute devastation and by the way then they say oh look how incompetent the government is people can't eat and they had this phony thing where Marco Rubio and uh, Trump uh, uh, shipped a bunch about uh, boxes of food for like 2,000 people to the Brazilian border. And the government of Venezuela said, we don't need your charity. We're a rich nation. Pay us for our oil. Right now, the Cokes are holding some of the money from Venezuela that they're supposed to pay for the oil. Some of it went is under the control of the U.S. Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, who's made sure that the number one creditor of Venezuela – of Venezuela's American oil arm, which is called Citgo. You've seen those stations. Yep. Um, the number one creditor is Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, where Steve Mnuchin hails from, they're getting a chunk of the money. The Cokes are, are doing very well by this process of stealing Venezuela's money. In the meantime, the people are starving. And that's what's happening. It's a, sto it's a choking embargo. And you have other oily nations who are joining in to give Trump, normally, you know, Trump is, is isolated in foreign affairs. So why are uh, nations like Canada and, uh, and the British government joining in on this attack? Well, isn't the, 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 the largest or second largest source of revenue for Canada's economy oil? Yes. So they are in direct competition with Venezuela. And one of, here's one of the things I want that we, we shouldn't forget. One of the charges against the current elected president, not the, the Trump chosen president, but the elected president right, Maduro. is that the, Maduro is that he's corrupt, his government is corrupt, and the oil money has been stolen. Yeah, it's been stolen, but by the Kochs, by Mnuchin, by Goldman Sachs, etc. This is a pretty funny claim by, for example, Pierre, uh, excuse me, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, is right now under investigation for covering up massive bribes to Muammar, to Muammar Gaddafi or bribing that government for its oil in Libya. Right, um, back in the day. And, yeah, and uh, the U.K. government also was uh, taking, uh, was uh, paying bribes about $200 million to the Saudis because they could be bribed, and the right. government had to um, quash that investigation under national security grounds. In the U.S., the Minerals and Mining Services was known as a cesspool of corruption, uh, trading sex and goodies and Super Bowl tickets for U.S. oil resources, that's in the U.S. 
Right. Uh, Exxon, uh, that, that uh, American uh, flag-waving company, Exxon Mobil, was part of a group of oil companies that paid a $160 million bribe to the president of Kazakhstan. And by the way, we're not worried about those dictators like Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, the, the Saudi royals who were just dictators in bathrobes. We don't worry about democracy in those nations, do we? Right. Um, and by the way, an Exxon official did get three years in prison for that bribery, but no one else. It goes on and on. And what I found from oil company executives in the years that I've been covering Venezuela, I did it first for The Guardian and BBC. That's when I I was down in Venezuela many times, met with Chavez, with Maduro, with the opposition, too. And what oil company executives were telling me, the frustration with Venezuela is that they couldn't be bribed. Chavez was unbribable. Is there is there no corruption? Whenever you have oil, you've got dirty hands somewhere. Sure. In the so a question, but, yeah. Greg, if, 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 if here's a, a hyper simplistic understanding of the situation. Now, let me lay that out and you can tell me if I've got right or wrong. And if I have it right, then I have a question based on it. Okay. It sounds to me like what you're saying is the Koch brothers own a refinery that can basically only refine this heavy, heavy oil that comes from e- both either Venezuela or Canada. And the Keystone XL pipeline is an effort to get that Canadian tar sands oil down to the Koch Brothers refinery, but it has not yet been completed. So That's basically, right. the, the only place they can get the oil to make their money is, and, and, and leave the waste products in Texas and Louisiana is uh, from Venezuela. I, am, yeah. I, am I right so far? Okay, yeah. step two. So then the Koch Brothers start leaning on the Trump administration and the Republican Party uh, and, and, you know, one of their toadies, Marco Rubio, to make life absolutely miserable for the Venezuelans. So because the Venezuelans are charging them, you know, a premium for this oil and uh, in the process trying to take down the government because the new guy, uh, the, you know, this, this white guy that you described who has claimed he's president, even though he's just like the Speaker of the House, of, uh, the equivalent of Speaker of the House, has yeah. said, already said, that he's willing to bring the American oil companies in. He's willing to basically privatize some of Venezuela's oil and sell that oil to the Coke uh, refinery back at the spot prices, back at lower prices. Am I right so far? You are right so far. Let me add one other thing. The British government last year asked the Venezuelan government to give British Petroleum the oil fields that had been controlled by the French, uh, French Total. Right. Um, they didn't worry about the dictatorship or democracy or corruption. They wanted those oil fields. The minute the Venezuelan government said, no, you can't have those fields, British Petroleum, uh, we're keeping it for Venezuelans, uh, suddenly uh, they are dictators, and the British government has withheld $1.5 billion in gold, solid gold kept in the basement of the British exchequer that belongs to Venezuela. That money could feed a lot of people. Oh, that's their, that's, their, that's their reserves. Yeah, so here's my question. If, if, yeah. if everything that I described is accurate, um, mm-hmm. then, and Maduro is fighting for his life now because he took on these oligarchs, why, not yeah. just, why doesn't he just drop the price of his oil to the Coke refineries down to you know, the uh, international spot prices? Um, he'll still be able to have a profit, sell the oil, and basically say, you guys back off, stop you know, trying to foment a revolution against me, and I'll sell you the oil at reasonable prices. Well, what you're saying, yeah, I mean, there's, should he respond to a gun to his head? And the answer is probably yes. I'm going to tell you something. I know Maduro. I knew Chavez. Chavez, as he said, was a great chess player. He knew how to push just so far and no further. For example, he annoyed the oil companies and drove out Exxon by putting a 17% tax on Venezuelan oil. By the way, that's about what Sarah Palin uh, tax the uh, oil companies in Alaska. Right. So he knew he could go so far and no further. For all his rhetoric, he uh, did not, uh, he didn't push further than he was more pragmatic. the politics that happened. Maduro is, is a hardliner and not much of a chess player. And, you know, the, the truth is when the British government, British Petroleum, comes to you and says, uh, we would like your oil, you're supposed to say, yes, sir, and just bargain the terms. You know, the guy was inflexible, and now, you know, if you don't cuddle up to British Petroleum, you don't cuddle up to Exxon, you know, you don't cuddle up to these, uh, to these, uh, yeah, guys Coke industries. These oil. And the Koch brothers, baby, you've taken on some pretty heavy duty cats, and you, and unfortunately, it's not just Maduro, it's, it's people, uh, according to the UN rapporteur, and that's the in- official investigator of the, uh, from the UN, 
He says it's a medieval siege. It's a war crime because they are using starvation to obtain oil. That's the U.N.'s official reporter. There, so who is the they who is using starvation to obtain oil, according to the U.N.? Uh, BP, the U.S., and it's all companies. Exxon wants to get back in and want those fields back. Okay, uh, so we know all of this, right? And this is obvious, right? <clears throat> we hear Trish uh, Regan or Reagan on Fox News saying, oh, once we get rid of Maduro, then real investment can happen in Venezuela. Real investment, BP, Exxon. Koch brothers. I want to read one more thing. There are some good articles on global research tonight. Venezuela, public disbelief that the U.S. is spreading democracy, weaponizing fake news. Reality is collateral damage in the war to regain narrative control. The myth of American exceptionalism has been busted. Yes busted. And Venezuela's civilian military union and the white supremacist American 17th century pilgrims and this disgusting murderous thug Elliot Abrams. Yeah. The US centric mindset has been steeped in the white supremacist notion of the chosen people from the time of the 17th century pilgrims. It consists, among other features, of the racist outlook that peoples in the third world, such as Latin America, cannot take their destiny in their own hands. However, the opposite has been and is presently taking place. Venezuelans a lot of them support Maduro and they are out in the streets. Not only has the Pilgrim Chosen People guideline for U.S. foreign policy blinded Washington as to its capacity to conquer a country such as Venezuela, the arrogance of the 17th century Bible-thumping city upon a hill. You are the light of the world. <laughs> has further inspired the majority of Venezuelans. They are increasingly resisting the U.S. and their allies. The Chavista movement is increasingly becoming the author of its own Bolivarian, Bolivarian revolution, not only participating in it. Yeah. Well, is mainstream media reporting on this? A peek into the horrific findings of the UN report on Israel's massacre. Massacre. When I get really tired, I can sound very kind of New York Street. Massacre of Gaza protesters. I'm sure you're not going to hear any of that, right? You're just going to hear these mainstream media reporters like Trish say, he's a murderous dictator. We are truly a disgusting nation. We are the evil that we keep saying other countries are or leaders are. We support incredibly evil governments like Israel. We support dictators around the world as long as they submit go along with what we want. Oh, stop saying we, Carol. You know, it's, it's, look, if you don't think Americans are part of this, if you don't think Americans, their lack of care, their refusal to give up their willful ignorance, you don't see that as contributing to this incredible moral uh, abyss, decline. A nation can only be as moral as its people are. So we keep saying 
that Maduro, the elections, that he stole the elections, international observers to Venezuela's election pen letter to the EU. The EU stated this, major obstacles to the participation of opposition political parties and their leaders, an unbalanced composition of the National Electoral Council, biased electoral conditions, numerous reported um, irreg irregularities Sorry, during the election day, including vote buying, stood in the way of fair and equitable elections. Well, oh, this is penned by a member of roughly a hundred strong core of observers of the May 20 Venezuelan election. He wrote this, we noted in particular not only the sophistication of the voting system, which in our collective view is fraud proof but also that every stage from the vote itself to the collation of returns, their verification and electronic submission was conducted in the presence of representatives of the contending parties. As for reporting irregularities, we would be interested to hear of examples since the reporting system is exceptionally rigorous and tamper free. We doubt you have any evidence to back up the EU's claim of numerous reporting irregularities. We were unanimous in concluding that the elections were conducted fairly, that the election con uh, conditions were not biased, that genuine irregularities were exceptionally few and of uh, very minor nature. There was no vote buying because there is no way that a vote can be bought. The procedure itself precludes any possibility of anyone knowing how a voter cast his or her vote and it is impossible as we verified for an individual to vote more than once or for anyone to vote on behalf of someone else in short the claims in your press release are fabrications of the most disgraceful kind based on hearsay and not on evidence and unworthy of the European Union. No, it's very worthy of the European Union because you have people who are psychopaths, narcissists out for their own agenda and well they're a lying breed with no moral core. It has not escaped notice that the EU was invited to send observers to the election and declined to do so. Yes, uh, the United States was also invited to send observers and we declined to do so because observers would have seen what this group saw an exceptionally rigorous and tamper-free election. So how could we then come out and say the election was tampered with, Maduro stole it, Juan Guaido is the president. <laughs> None of the criticism in your EU press release is therefore based on direct EU observation in the field. Fabrications. Well, this is what we're living, guys. And yeah, the only way to turn this around is if people in Western nations in particular begin to care about what is taking place and then demand, want something better. How about just want something better? Yeah. All links are below.